Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on PLOS TV uh, Africa. Um, we're very sorry that uh, we're starting a little bit late. Uh, it was due to unforeseen circumstances. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today on the show we'll be looking at uh, two hot topics. Uh, hopefully we can treat them in time. Uh, to get the message across. First of all, we're going to be looking at the fact that the federal government has suspended accreditation of degree certificates from Benin Republic and Togo as well. And then we have uh, also a coalition, Lord Tinubu's renewed clampdown on corruption. We'll have some guests that will x-ray these and agree or disagree uh, with these stands. Okay, so we'll move straight to top trending issues. Top trending issues will begin with Plateau State declares one week of mourning over attacks. The Plateau State Governor, Caleb Mutfang, has declared a one week mourning over the two separate attacks in the state in the last two weeks in the north central state in which roughly 200 people were killed and scores wounded. While declaring the one week mourning period, Governor Muftuang uh, told residents of the state that flags will be flying at half mast during the time. He urged all citizens to use the days of four intense prayers to seek the intervention of God in defending the territory against what he called wicked men that have risen against the state. The governor also called on religious leaders to offer special prayers for peace in the troubled state. He also pleaded with Muslim clerics to dedicate Friday, January 5th, 2024, and the Christian clergy to use Sunday, January 7th, 2024, as special prayer days for lasting peace <clears throat> to return to the plateau. The latest attacks in the north central state have triggered an uproar of condemnations and calls for a probe into their souls. President Bola Tinubu has called for an investigation into the incidents, while Vice President Kashim Shetima also visited the affected communities. Uh, Northwest and central Nigeria have been long terrorized by bandits, militias operating from bases deep in the forest and raiding villages to loot and kidnap residents for ransom. Competition for natural resources between nomadic herders and farmers intensified by rapid population growth and climate pressures has also exacerbated social tensions and sparked violence. And a lot of people have said that it is possible that it's because of the natural resources that are in the ground in those states uh, in the north uh, that's making people do what they're doing, that this is being sponsored. The Chief of Defense Staff also came out the other day and said it was a political thing. Uh, a lot of people have said this is beyond headers and uh, farmers' clashes. This is something really, really bad and more than just the headers and farmers' clashes and everybody is involved. So we hope that the government and all the relevant authorities will look into this and make sure this kind of insecurity does not escalate to other states and it does not even continue in these states that are experiencing uh, these uh, things. We just pray that the people who lost their lives will find favor in God's eyes and the people who were left behind to mourn will have the strength to carry on. Okay, the second top trending issue is not central governor's visit plot to donate 100 million naira. That's just like a follow-up of the first story. Days after the deadly attacks that claimed over 200 lives in Plateau State, governors of the North Central region on Tuesday visited Governor Caleb Mutfuang. The governors that were physically present included Hyacinth Aliyah of Benue, Abdullahi Sule Nasarawa and Umaru Bagu of Niger. Governors Yahya Belu of Kogi and Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak of Kwara were however absent with no reason given. During the visit to the Plateau State Government House, they donated 100 million naira on behalf of the region's governors. Plateau has been experiencing a series of attacks by non-state actors locally called bandits who kill people at will without being challenged by security agencies. While the state is yet to recover from the death of several people in the Christmas Eve attacks on Bokos and Barkanladi, local government areas of the state, the assailants struck again on December 31, killing two persons, a father and his son. The attacks prompted the visit of the service chiefs as well as the Minister of State for Defense, Belo Matawale, and his humanitarian affairs and poverty alleviation counterpart, Betaidu. Amnesty International criticized the government in the, the wake of attacks, saying the Nigerian authorities have been failing to end frequent deadly attacks on rural communities of Plateau State. 
uh, that was on their post on X. Now, northwest and central Nigeria have been terrorized by bandits, as we said earlier. Uh, they operate from bases deep in the forest and raid villages to loot and kidnap residents for ransom. A jihadist conflict has raged in northeastern Nigeria since 2009, killing tens of thousands of people and displaying around two million as Boko Haram battles for supremacy with rivals linked to the Islamic State group. Well, the Chief of Defense Staff has said that no village will be occupied by bandits this year. No village or territory of Nigeria will be occupied by whether the jihadis or the bandits or whoever uh, is a non-state actor that is causing mayhem in the north, uh, generally in the north, not only north central. North east is there, north west is there, north central is there. And in pockets of uh, uh, the south also, there are this kind of bandits and terrorists uh, operating. We do hope that we can take the word for it, uh, the Chief of Defense Staff word for it, and make sure that Nigeria is safe enough in 2024. Also, Alhaji Musulu Akinsoya, who is also known as MC Oluomo, uh, has stepped down as the chairman of the Lagos State Chapter of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, NURTW. MC Oluomo who is widely considered one of President Tinubu's allies and loyalists whose association with the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces has been questioned by members of the public, was reportedly forced by the President to leave the position. While the Lagos State Chapter of NURTW is said to be more financially attractive than its national leadership, it has been reported that President Tinubu prevailed on MC Oluomo to step down and vie to become the national president of NURTW. In the meantime, Mustafa Adekunle, that is Sego, uh, the current treasurer of the Union in the state, will take over the reins at the Lagos State Secretariat of the Transport Workers Union. The reported ailment of the factional president of the NURTW, Tajuddin Agbede, opens the door for MCO Luomo to move to the National Secretariat in Abuja. In October 2023, a factional NURTW president, Al Haji Tajuddin Barua, accused the Minister of Labor and Employment, Solomon Lalong, of bias by taking sides with Agbede's faction backed by MC Olomo in the ongoing reconciliation process. Now, Barua accused the Minister of working in cohorts uh, with a former president of the union, Al-Haji Najim Usman Yassin, to foist on the union someone who forcefully took over the National Secretariat of the Union with thugs and hoodlums from Lagos. Baruwak disclosed this in a statement issued by the General Secretary of the Union, Comrade Anthony Asogwa Chukudi, in Abuja. He alleged that the minister held a meeting with the Agbede led group of the Union on Wednesday, October 18, 2023, in this office, where the minister allegedly asked the group to organize a fresh national quadrennial delegates conference in contravention of the provisions of the Union's constitution, particularly Article 8, Section 2, Subsection 1. Now, in September 2023, the Lagos State Government dissolved its Park and Garages uh, Committee to allow NURTW to manage activities and motor parks uh, and garages in uh, the state. The dissolution was made after the State Government uh, lifted the indefinite suspension placed on NURTW barely one year and a half earlier over internal leadership wranglings among members. It also came barely 24 hours after MCO Luomo publicly returned to the NURTW with thousands of his members in the state. Days earlier, he led his Parks Management Committee to Abuja, where he also mobilized some thugs to be on standby in case the ruling of the presidential election tribunal did not favor President Tinubu. There has also been a crisis in the Lagos State chapter of the NURTW following MC Oluomo's recent re-election for a second term. Uh, it shows that um, the days ahead are going to be very interesting. Let's watch out and see. But we do hope that there will not be uh, chaos in any uh, part of the country because of this. We do hope that the transition, if there need to be a transition, will be seamless and we will find days of peace in uh, our country. He's moving to, he's supposedly uh, moving to the national scene. Lagos is lucrative, Lagos is very juicy, but we hope that uh, there will be no problem and NURTW will continue to exist as one united body uh, giving services to Nigerians. We know the critical role they play in our 
the, the life of our country, especially when it comes to elections, they are the ones that are contracted to carry the election materials to places that we need to take them to and all that. So they play a critical role in their own aspects and they help people trans, trans or, or, or travel. Yeah, travel, that's, that's the word, travel from place to place. So uh, kudos to them, but there should be peace while this transition is going on. So we'll just go ahead and take a few of the headlines, if it's possible, and then take a break after that and be joined by our, our, our guests. Oh, let's just take a break right now. And when we return, we'll be looking at the headlines and uh, we'll be joined by someone else who will be helping us to x-ray what the headlines are. Just don't go away. <laughs> 